All right, hello traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on Daily FX. Today is Monday, August 15th. Michael Boutros, currency strategist here with you this morning. Uh, good to be with you here, Jonathan, Michael, Panama, Pete, um, Ricardo, Rio. Great to see you guys here in the room. So, start of another week, uh, of a nice week with some decent trades that we had online uh, last week with some of the volatility that we saw in Aussie, specifically the dollar crosses. Heading into this week, you do get a barrage of CPI data. You get CPI data tomorrow from the UK. Also from the US, uh, tomorrow's CPI data will be of importance. We'll go over setups in the last couple of scalp reports from Daily FX. You had dollar CAD, Kiwi dollar. Uh, we'll also go over active setups that we're currently tracking on SB Trade Desk, uh, Aussie Kiwi, Aussie dollar, and obviously the Euro. We'll touch base on gold and crude as well. And guys, as always, if you have any other specific questions or trade pet setups you want to follow, uh, please feel free to post them on the message board. Rio wants to look at uh, Euro Pound. Sure. Someone from SB actually asked about that last week. Not my favorite setup, but I do think you're coming in some important levels. So we'll, we'll get into Euro Pound. Sure, no problem. All right, let's jump right in. Before we get started, heading into the U.S. session, here's what the dollar index looks like thus far. Um, you have a pretty split decision today uh, with the dollar stronger against Kiwi, Aussie, Yen, Euro, CAD, but you're seeing that the sterling taking, uh, or excuse me, Kiwi, Aussie, Euro, CAD making strength against the dollar. You see that the pound is the only thing that's really off, 0.27% so far in the session. I think that's where you're seeing some of the upside in the index here. Remember, the Dow Jones FXCM dollar index uh, represents, at its inception, equally weighted Euro, Aussie, Sterling, Yen. Uh, Ricardo, great to see you in the room, buddy, says, what's your favorite setups? We'll go over them. Uh, the ones that we're following over on SB Trade Desk. So, Euro, I'm currently holding a position on Aussie. Um, Aussie Kiwi, we've been holding Aussie Kiwi since sub 105 uh, over on SB. So, Aussie Kiwi Long, it's another one we're interested in. Um, and Euro, we're currently holding Euro longs off 111.50 as well. So we'll go over those in a, in a moment, Ricardo. So for the dollar index, key levels to keep in mind this week. So we started off last week with a downside by a sub 12,028. Guys, that hasn't changed. Uh, it's that big high um, volume pivot that we made right here in price. It was also that uh, post the Brexit rally on the 25th, uh, seventh, that following subsequent Monday, the close of that session, you have the 200-day moving average, and you have the 50 line of the current operative structure. And as we've said, if you bring this into a close chart, okay, just a line chart, you can see that that trend line, this median line formation, has been offering some really nice touches, really nice touches, really nice touches, and that median line coincides in that big region, just sub 12,028. So I do think you can possibly stretch higher here in the dollar index early in the week, but below this region, we're looking lower. One other thing I do want to note is that on its face value, guys, this is simply a monthly opening range. Here's your monthly open. Okay, your monthly open came in 11,936. You, you set a low the second day of trade for the month. You rallied into a high, and you're kind of sitting right here, dilly-dallying in between. So on its base case scenario, you're looking for a break of the monthly opening range. I favor a downside break, but I wouldn't put it past this thing to see one last spike into 12,028 before turning over. So broadly speaking, uh, look to sell a dollar strength towards 12,028, a break below 11,900, really needed to validate uh, the full-on reversal targeting 11,850 which is a nice confluence region here, 618 retracement and a 618 extension off the high. And that would be your first uh, sort of area of interest for support on a downside break. Okay, so even for those of you who can't trade this, if you're stateside, um, you know, really nice tool to be able just to assess base, base dollar moves, right? What the dollar is doing on the underlying pressure. Uh, Chris, great to see you in the room. Good morning to you as well, sir. It says dollar CAD looks very heavy this morning. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, any other questions on dollar index before we move off? Here's what it looks like on the 30 minute. I really don't have anything too compelling here. Um, last week, you saw a pretty decent weekly opening range to the downside. It actually spiked into the low right midweek. We rallied into basically the underbelly of the opening range for the week and then pushed off again into Friday's 
uh, week retail sales numbers. But largely speaking, again, it wouldn't put it past this thing to make one last spike in too high here uh, before turning over. Mike wants to take a look at Euro Yen. Let me write that down. A lot of Euro crosses on the menu for you guys today, huh? Okay, let's see if we can can't get through these so I can get uh, to your requests here. So dollar index look higher to get short. Uh, that's the summation of the story. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the setups that we tracked last week uh, over on SB tri over on Daily FX first. And I want to go over that Aussie Kiwi setup. Well, I guess first let's go over Aussie dollar. Here's what Aussie dollar looked like on SB last week. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who are interested, we're still running that offer uh, for SB Trade Desk for Daily FX subscribers. If you are interested in that service run by myself and uh, senior uh, technical strategist Jamie Satelli, uh, go ahead and click on that link. And that's the discount offer uh, for Daily FX subscribers for $40 off your first month subscription. Um, but for Aussie Dollar, here's what it looked like last week. Heading into the retail sales print, okay, and I was looking for that drop to be honest with you into 76.30, okay. That was a 38.2 retracement. You had the lower median line parallel for the current operative uh, slope. Really clean setup. Uh, the daily chart was coming into a critical area of resistance. You have the 88.6 retracement from the decline off of the yearly highs we set forth in April. Um, you had the median lines, a sliding parallel, even caught that last stretch, um, and the inherent risk was for a move lower. Now remember, when we're trading these kinds of things, we're not calling the high, we're not calling the reversal. All we're saying is we're coming into a big area of resistance, and from a near-term intraday strategy, uh, trading strategy, you know, the opportunity was there to try to get a short on the hand. So it actually worked out pretty well. Uh, here's what Aussie dollar looks like now. You saw that on the daily chart, you kind of spiked right off that region. Okay, so here's that same daily chart. You came right into that region. You got a nice kick right off it, okay, to the downside. And that's what we were looking to play. So we closed out shorts on Friday. I actually opened up Sunday with a long here um, in Aussie dollar just on account of where we were in trend. Here's what the near-term chart looks like. Okay. And here's where we were last week. So the one thing that I wanted to note is after we developed some more price action and we got that retail sales spike higher, if you took a 100% or if you took just a basic Fibonacci extension, look where the 100 came in last night. came in right alongside this median line uh, support. And this formation has been offering some really nice guidance in price. So for me, as price came into here, you had some divergence in momentum. It was an obvious long opportunity. Um, did shave off 24 pips of that one, still holding a small percentage of it heading into the U.S. trade session, looking to see if we can get that final stretch towards 76.87 to the upside. Another way of playing this, which is how we're playing it over on SB Trade Desk, is also you can do it through Aussie Kiwi, which looks like it's poised for further gains. So we'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, but before we do, any questions on Aussie? Do not forget, we do get the RBA minutes tonight. Um, could be a market mover for the Aussie crosses, so we'll be looking for that. Broadly speaking, I think you could see a deeper correction in the Aussie near term. This is sort of your area of support. It's now the weekly opening range low, and it would necessitate a break below the lower parallel for this formation, which has been holding really well, really well. Again, Aussie has been so clean. And again, I mean, for those of you who've been on SB, you've been seeing this chart for a while. But just to put things in perspective on the type of clarity and the technical cleanliness, if you can call it here for Aussie, uh, this formation that dates back to last year, catching the highs, catching the lows, that sliding parallel, literally catching the highs last week. So I wouldn't put it past this thing. You see a little bit more of a drop to the downside here before correcting higher. But largely speaking, Excuse me, the trade does remain constructive while well above 75, 76. Any questions on Aussie dollar? <clears throat> All 
Okay, so now that we kind of got a picture of where Aussie is, right, you're kind of getting this correction off the high. You've completed two equal legs down, so uh, we'll work with basically a 76.30 near-term bullish invalidation level. Um, but looking at Aussie Kiwi, which is another one that we've been involved with, swing trades have been long on this, like I said, uh, for a couple hundred pips already um, over on SB. But if we take a look at Aussie Key, where we're starting off the week, let me look at the daily chart first. Here's the broader setup from the daily chart. Okay, and here's what we look like uh, last week. We'll go over this in just a moment. But here's what the daily chart looks like. Um, again, SB guys, you've seen this a million times, but for those of you who haven't, this is the slope of influence here for Aussie Key. We've been talking about it uh, literally for over a year. Uh, this is basic trend line support extending off the January 2014 low. Support, support, break, resistance, 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 break, support, support, support. You get the picture. Take that same slope to find the lows heading into the end of last year, into the start of this year. Take that same slope, extend it off last year's low. It defined that turn into this year's low. Okay, so the reason that we started to look higher was because we came off of this major trend line support extending off the 2015 low. It was also a 764 retracement. You saw a quick probe through here and a quick jackknife last month on some building daily divergence. So this greatly shifted our focus to the upside heading into mid last month. Um, and obviously the rally came right into former support. Now resistance. Again, the only thing that matters on these daily charts is the close, and if we do that, you can see very stringent support, or resistance rather, from the underbelly, and then again last week, stringent resistance. Interestingly enough, we went into the week on SB saying a bullish invalidation level or key support at 105.40. Here was the low that we made last week, right around 105.31. That was on a spike low, we quickly recovered, and the severity of the rebound, we actually closed this day higher on the session, still keeps the focus higher now, while above this region here at 105.80. Okay, the lower parallel and former trend line resistance or parallel resistance now support convergence. Whoop, that's not what I wanted to do, it is right over here. Okay, so you could get a little bit of a probe lower before you start to move higher, but I'm broadly looking for support to hold here on Aussie Key. Again, ultimately favoring that topside break. The next major key hurdle to get through for Aussie Key is 107.93. Okay, you have the 200-day moving average, which sneaks in just below that. 50% retracement. This is of the decline just off the high that you made here from uh, April of this year. And the median line which caught literally the spike high last week, also converges on this region. So I think the levels are very clear as far as what the game plan is. You want to stay constructive above this near-term confluence support, ultimately looking for a break above that 100-day moving average at 107.27 to target that key, key region of resistance near-term, just sub 108, 107.93. All right, here's what the near-term chart looks like uh, for Aussie Key. Nothing too different from what we had on tap last week. Uh, here's what it looked like. And we were citing a long bias while above 105.54. Uh, uh, this is from Daily FX. Here's the link on that if you're not on the mailing list. Uh, by the way, if you're not on the mailing list and would like to be, uh, here is the link. And when I publish any research to uh, Daily FX, you will get... Um, you will get that email to your inbox. So just go ahead and click on that link, guys, if you're interested in joining uh, the distribution list. Um, so these levels haven't changed, my bottom line. This is a 120-minute chart from last week. Here's what the 30-minute looks like right now. Uh, you kind of needed to clear that uh, 2016 open. You probed through it, okay? But then you came and closed the week back at the 50% retracement just of that near-term rally. So I'm still working with that as near-term support, bullish invalidation. We're going to keep with the lower parallel. Um, and again, a topside breach higher. You're looking for that spike higher towards 108, 107.93, as we noted on the daily chart. This is that trend line of influence, that multi-year trend line resistance. Okay. 
Any questions on Aussie Key? Okay, so we got Aussie, we got Aussie Key. Um, let's go over Dollar CAD. Someone was asking about that earlier. Um, it's holding support as of now, but it's holding downtrend support. So Chris, I know you're asking about Dollar CAD uh, earlier. Here's what we looked like last week on Dollar CAD. Okay. And we'll take a look at the daily chart in a moment. So the title of the trade was the advances vulnerable sub 131.86. I didn't really expect the pullback to get this steep. Um, and I do still think the broader trade remains constructive, but we are coming to some near-term support. So here's what the daily chart looked like last week. And the risk was on a break sub 131 uh, to see a drop towards this key region here. You have the 100-day moving average. You have a sliding parallel for the current operative slope off of the yearly lows. And they both converged right down here, basically just sub 130. Now, um, 131 was the pivot. Okay, 131 was the pivot on the way up, 131 was the pivot on the way down. If you guys remember on SB, those of you, we were looking to get a breakout trade above 31. That trade only lasted a couple of days before that sliding parallel really capped the advance and we broke right back below. We've sort of been dilly-dallying and pivoting right off that 31 handle ever since last week into the close of the week. We finally got that downside break and we slid right into this key region. We're now trading just below that key region. Okay, into the 29 handle essentially. Here's what the 30 minute chart looked like last week. Okay, and we've made it through all the downside targets. So we were looking to possibly look to open up some shorts, or excuse me, some longs as we got into 130. That level gave out, and we're now looking at support down here. Here's what uh, dollar cat looks like <clears throat> now. First on the daily chart. Okay. So we took out that key support at that 100-day moving average. You're now looking for support along the lower parallel, which is just a basic trend line support off the low. That's just below where we are right now, like basically at the 29 handle. Okay. Note that momentum is coming right into 40 support as well. A little more room to the downside to go there. Here's what the scalp looks like. And here's what we looked like last week. So you can see, again, uh, 3040 got taken out, 129.95 got taken out. There's that 129.54. That's basically where we opened the week. And look where we're finding support, right at that downtrend support. Okay, so I don't have a game plan from here moving forward for the week. If we break below this level, you still have that longer term slope support to deal with, and that's right like I said, just below the 29 handle. So you got like a 25 pip range to play with, Chris, here. I don't really know for me if that's worth me doing anything per se. He says oil is rallying, so maybe dollar CAD will break below support. Let me take a segue and show you oil, actually. We've been following this one daily over on SB as well. Here's what oil looks like. So I have oil at resistance. So the way I'm thinking, Chris, is you could see oil spike a little bit higher into this key range. Uh, this is the May open, which isn't really that significant, except for the fact that we've made so many pivots off it. Resistance, 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 break, support, 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 break. Comes in just above the 50% retracement and would necessitate a break of this trend line resistance. So I'm looking for basically resistance right around here. Okay, into this region here, or near term, let's say this is our bearish invalidation level. Okay, so I think this could spike a little higher, which could drive dollar CAD a little bit lower towards that daily trend line support line here. And that's where this thing finds some support, Chris, is kind of what I'm thinking heading into the start of the week. Um, obviously, we'll obviously have the opening range sets up here for the start, but that's sort of my mindset. Keep in mind, this is going to be the set, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, sixth consecutive day of losses if we do um, close lower on the session for crude. Does that make sense, Chris, as far as dollar cat's concerned? Ideally, you start to see this thing continue to, to hold that slope into this support right here. 
and then you get some building divergence into a momentum trigger somewhere around here would be a nice area to start looking for a nice rebound here in dollar cad but i do want to see uh crude sort of hold that resistance near term heading into the session all right uh chris with emphatic yes thank you you're more than welcome sir i appreciate that so that is dollar cad any questions on the loony Aussie key, Aussie dollar. Let's go over uh, Kiwi dollar, which, if I'm not mistaken, I think we also covered here on Daily FX. No, that might have been on SB. Oh, here we go. So we were we were following this one all week long. We actually had a really nice series of scalps on this one last week. Um, look, the pullback that you saw off. Well, let me take a step back. Here's what dollar, or a Kiwi dollar looks like now. And it's all about, I mean, the daily chart's so wicked on this that um, I, for me, near term, it's a little bit more cautious. If you're holding, uh, if you're with us on SB Trade Desk, we're holding shorts off uh, 72.50 still, so you're still in the money on that front. Um, but as far as Kiwi's concerned, 72.96 was such a paramount level. And on this entire rally, that's sort of the focus I've been looking at. You had the March 2015 low day close. So you have to go all the way back um, to last year's low day close, okay, from uh, March, which held for quite some time until you made the break subsequent in June. But long story short, that level came in right at 72.95. This year's high day close, specifically the close that you made here on July 12th, was just a hair above that. So you're basically looking at like 72.96, 72.94 as a major key resistance zone for Kiwi. We tried to probe through it. That March day closed last year, failed. Or uh, excuse me, last year. In June, failed. We tried to probe through it again in July. The high day close set right there. And then here's the last attempt. Third and highest spike tried to attempt to get through. And you can see how hard we got slammed to the downside. Momentum this entire time since that high on the high day close, 60 resistance, 60 resistance. So for me, the whole thing's starting to look a little tired. Ideally, like if you would have put this in a perfect world, I would have looked for a, a stretch into this region, okay, for a short. That's 7390, 7380, um, a longer dated 764 retracement. This would have equaled two equal legs up off the low. And it coincides very nicely with basic trend line resistance. That would have been like the ideal scenario. But now that you're getting these kinds of long wicks and major key pip, you know, kickbacks from resistance as momentum is fading, um, you know, to me that those are indications that indeed you're seeing momentum start to get tired here and want to turn over. So I'm looking lower still. Uh, here's what the near-term chart looks like. The only reason I haven't gotten too aggressive uh, on the long side here is because I'm still counting this as still within the confines of uptrend support. Uh, yesterday was sort of the tell for me. Uh, as we opened the week, we gap lower, fill that gap. I want to see this turnover break 7170. And for me, this was the near-term bullish invalidation level. I mean, if we gave up there, um, you know, initial targets of 7145, 7150, and then down here at the key 618, right basically at 71. Uh, but you got, you know, real lackluster momentum here last night and didn't even, you know, give us many triggers or anything to work with. So there was nothing really here to do. Uh, the rebound is taking us back above former trendline support, basic parallel support. And I think you might little, you might give it a little stretch higher before it turns over. Long story, I do like the uh, Kiwi looking lower near term here. Uh, there might be a little trend line resistance right there to work off of off the highs. <clears throat> but broadly looking lower here in Kiwi dollar, you do need to clear that 7140 zone to really get the next move, um, in my humble opinion, to the downside here. And again, these would be your sort of initial downside targets. Keep in mind the monthly open is right here, 72. We're s literally straddling the monthly open. So anything in your term price action, you know, unless you deviate too far from that, you kind of just want to keep that in mind that we haven't really done much yet this month.
As far as Kiwi data is concerned, you do get the unemployment numbers uh, on the 16th. So that's tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening here in New York. Uh, do keep that in mind. We're looking for unemployment to actually drop from 5.7% to 5.3%, um, with labor force participation expected to actually drop as well from 69% uh, to 688 So those numbers will be of importance heading into tomorrow evening. Uh, we'll give you a preview tomorrow, guys, on SB before, uh, before that release. Any questions on Kiwi before we move off? Keep in mind tomorrow's CPI print for the United States will probably be the major market mover, at least for the dollar crosses early in the week. Um, you know, here's what those numbers are supposed to come out looking like before we start to move any deeper. CPI month on month is expected to come in flat. Now the main headline year on year number is expected to soften from 1% to 0.9%. More importantly, core, uh, which strips out food and energy year on year is expected to hold at 2.3. Some things to keep in mind, guys. A, you got the employment numbers just blowing them out of the water, right? And I think by all accounts, uh, if you are to look at the Fed's uh, sort of gauge of the natural quote unquote rate of unemployment, we're pretty much there, okay? Um, which the Fed has a dual mandate, fostering maximum employment and price stability. That puts all the emphasis now on inflation. And if the inflation numbers come out softer than expected, with interest rate expectations where they are now, we're not where we're where we are not even expecting a hike until twenty uh, essentially seventeen, um, expect that the dollar may come under some pressure. It might mean it might be just the catalyst that we need. Now, on the flip side of that coin, if P, if CPI comes in much stronger than expected, Okay, expect to see some uh, some some rebound or some relief, let's call it, in the dollar, um, because as as the inflationary targeting starts to get closer to two percent, as we start to see that employment is pretty much there, it really f ties the Fed's hands from the ability just to stay on the sidelines, and really puts added pressure on them to start to look to normalize, even in the face of central bank easing around the world. So certainly puts the Fed between a rock and a hard place, and that number will. Uh, by all means, be the major market mover for the dollar crosses here this week. Will you be able to send a link to your archive of this webinar? Thank you. Great setup, sir, says Ricardo. Yes, uh, Ricardo, I'll tweet it as soon as we're done. Uh, this archive, the Monday weekly archive uh, webinar, rather, gets archived on DailyFX um, and is viewable for later, um, for later viewing as you wish, Ricardo. So cheers, mate. Always great to see you. Okay, that is Kiwi Dollar. Next up on the menu, we have not covered Euro. And where would we be without the Euro? Here's what the Euro looks like now. So, uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I got stopped out of a long here, or a short here, excuse me, yesterday, uh, last night. It was only a, a, like a 13-pip stop, but long story short, uh, we opened up the week at support. Here's a nice slope line that we've been following uh, from last week's SB report. Uh, you had also a basic 618 retracement, uh, which caught a nice swing high here. It was a nice pivot last week. And the former 50 line, okay, which was resistance starting the week, we broke right through that. So I had a real tight stop just against the monthly open. It inevitably gave out. Obviously, we rallied higher. So I'll look to re-enter this one, but um, I'm still looking for the constructive side now. That that short side bias I tried to play yesterday was just on a break of this region. I was looking for a possible drop into like 111.22. Um, but now that we're still holding the slope, I'd rather actually look for a pullback to get back on the long side. Uh, SB Trade Desk is long from 111.50. Um, so we just, we have our stops at break even there. So we just missed got getting stopped out on this last pullback here. But Long story short, you need to get through this 111.89 level. For those of you who were with me last week, we know we talked about that for a while. Um, and this was actually a nice area to start turning bearish last week. Uh, we got a couple of nice shorts on the play for the Euro uh, before we started to rally towards that Friday. Uh, like I said, re week retail sales data here in the United States. Um, but the longer story still remains constructive here. So I'm looking for a more substantiated Euro pullback to get back on the long side uh, of Euro dollar. Ultimately tagging this critical region of resistance, which caught the highs last month, uh, or early this month, let's call it. 
uh, and that's right here into 122.30, 122.31. You have a 100% extension, 618 retracement overlap. My favorite setups. Here's what the euro dollar daily chart looks like. Okay. Um, I hope this chart is not too messy for you. Let me know if you have any questions on it. But basically, this is the current slope that we're following off the lows. So the Brexit low. It's within the confines or an embedded slope within the confines of this descending formation. So it really puts the, form, uh, the, the emphasis again on this region of resistance. That's where we capped out, like I said earlier in the month. This thing is loaded. 100% extension off the low. 618 retracement off the Brexit decline. 200, or excuse me, 100 day moving average. And the median line. All were stacked up there. So a nice place to get bearish. Nice place to get bullish, 200-day moving average, reversal day close, the median line, you had so much there. And heading into the start of last week, it was actually a really nice hold. Gave a little bit of a false break here, real nice hold. And again, we're inevitably looking for that top side move towards 1230, and that's the level we need to clear to, f to validate the further advance here in the euro. Any questions on Euro dollar? All right, so let's jump into your questions. Uh, I had a question here on Euro Yen and Euro Pound, so let's do uh, a quick run around there. Euro Pound, huh? Well, I don't have anything near term for you on Euro Pound. Oh, this is what we were talking about last week. So, um, someone brought this up in the um, in the morning webinars. Uh, by the way, guys, we do this uh, webinar Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings over on SB Trade Desk. So every morning ahead of the open of U.S. Trade, kind of get your dose of what's going on, uh, what we'll be looking to trade from the intraday strategy standpoint. And someone brought this up last week. Look, the break above eighty-seven eighty was big. I'm not gonna lie. Um, that was a real near-term 100% extension from the advance just off the low we got from that pullback last month. But more importantly, um, this formation, which is held for years now, okay, this is off the low uh, from August of 2015. You saw that it caught the highs. Uh, a little bit messy on the, uh, the lower parallel. But even on that false break, I just want to zoom this out for you. Let me get, I guess let me just bring this into a weekly chart. It might be easier to see. Okay. So basic trend line resistance off the highs from, um, what is that, uh, July of 2011. Okay, boom. Take that same slope off the highs from March of 20, uh, 2009. Boom. Take that same slope from the record high or that high that we made in 2008 during the crisis. That coincides with a basic 618 retracement right up here at 87. So that's what we were looking at last week. We're there now, basically. <laughs> we're there right now. So I don't have, Adam, I don't have anything to do with this, my man. He was saying it's at a three-year high. You're absolutely right. Um, it is a constructive trade in my humble opinion. Specifically, Adam, if this thing closes with uh, momentum and overbought territory, that's even more fuel on the fire. Last time we broke over a bot was right here. You can see the acceleration that price action saw. Prior to that was right here when we went over bot. Again, we saw a ramp up to the upside. So yeah, the you know um, the possibility is there for this thing to really see some stern upside moves here. My problem, Adam, is that 87 handle, 8709, just higher. Big, big region. Big region. If you're going to see a pullback or if you're going to see some sort of near-term corrective price action, this would be the initial region I would start to look for. So Chris, I, or Adam, excuse me, I can't get excited about getting long up here uh, with the same time. Am I going to try to short this with momentum and overbought condition or just breaking into overbought condition on an upslope? Probably not. Um, so on a trade like this, I think you kind of, you got to let it settle a little bit, Adam. You got to wait for either a near-term pullback back towards uh, former median line resistance now support for a possible entry on the long side here. Or if it breaks through, I still wouldn't go chasing it. I'd have to look for a pullback back towards that reason, region to get back on the long side, ultimately looking for 
a top side target. Let's bring this into a 764. 91.28 would be the top side target subsequent. But big region, big region of resistance. Adam, does that make sense for Euro pound? I don't really have any near term levels for you, my man, but like this is what we were looking at last week. And once that broke that break happened, um, you know, ultimately that's the target that we're looking for. We're just off resistance now. Getting long here would be tough. Trying to fight the rally here, I just don't think would be prudent. So I kinda need to see what happens as we get into that eighty seven handle. He says, yes, Michael, uh, yes, thanks, Michael, and more than welcome. So that is Euro Pound. Someone else wanted to look at Euro Yen. Who was that? Uh, Mike, was that you? So Michael, for Euro Yen, he says, yes. So here's what I'm looking at. Uh, again, not a trade I've actually gotten involved with at all, but something that we were checking out um, on the webinars last week. The only thing I'm kind of focused on right now is this formation here. I guess let me bring this into a weekly chart as well is this formation here. So this is um, a pitchfork off the 2000 low and the 2012 lows. While we didn't actually tag the highs, if you take this parallel, you can see, you can see that it's actually the same exact slope. Okay, that's one of the things you need to, I like to do a lot with these parallels, guys, to make sure that we're on the right slope. You can't just take a pitchfork and go on it, carte blanche, just face value. We need to see that price action has in, indeed reacted to that slope previously. And a lot of times it's just as simple as taking a parallel of the same slope and seeing, oh, wow, that caught the highs to the pip, right? And in fact, when I move this here, look how the lower parallel catches the lows as well. So it puts added emphasis, you know what, we're working with a good slope here, let's stick with it. So we came off of a big, big, big slope support, right, multi-year slope support. Looking at it from a, uh, um, a near-term price action standpoint, you also had some divergence into that low. Bring it into a close, it's the best way to visualize it, price action making a steeper low, the oscillator holding those lows, or making a slightly higher low. So there are all indications that the downside here, I think, was waning. Um, the question at hand right now is, um, how do we trade this moving forward? For me, I'm treating this very, very basic as a very simple monthly opening range. Your monthly opening range high comes in at the 50% retracement, 114.65. Your monthly opening range low comes in just above that long-term trend line support, extending off the 2,000 lows. So for me, Mike, this is the range you need to clear, man. You're basically looking at like 112.20 into 114.60. It's a larger range, but so is the ATR for Euro Yen. So keep that in mind. Um, again, humbly, I would be saying I'd be favoring a topside breach. Now, some interesting stuff here that we're talking about the Yen. I might as well just talk about it real quick. You know, there's some con um, headlines coming out over the weekend and heading into today's um, into the city today, I was just like reading some information. You know, they're saying that there's a lot of financial authorities who are saying that the top three effective banks basically are going to be losing massive profits because of the negative interest rate policy that they're holding um, in Japan. And the implications that hold, that suggests is that the BOJ um, might have its, high, its, its, its hands tied as, a, as far as trying to do aggressively more easing. And if that's going to start hitting bank performance and all this, well, what does that mean for Abenomics? I don't know the answer to that, guys, and I'm not a fundamental you know, analyst who's going to sit here and look at these numbers all day. I want to know where the trade is. I want to know where the profits to be made. You know, I'm not going to be following this story on a day-to-day on -day basis. I want to know when the events are happening and the implications they have on price action. To me, the yen strength in general still is vulnerable, no matter what you say. Here's dollar yen. I showed you this chart yesterday heading into um, the retail sales um, print on Friday. It kind of just took a big old dump right into the weekly opening range low or the weekly lows. And then we rebounded and held and closed well above them. So I still don't, you know, nothing for me has been invalidated per se. 
Um, I still think the short side is vulnerable, uh, but for Euro Yen, I'm just showing you the, the price action that you're seeing in broader Yen strength here, Mike. But if you take a look back to Euro Yen, I think the weekly opening range or the monthly opening range is sort of all you need to be looking at right now. Buy near support, sell near resistance. The breach above 114.65 would be what we would need to validate the reversal higher. Um, now, let me just take a look at something that's kind of just staring at me right now. Bear with me one moment here. Whoops. Okay, so I do have that on there. That's what that 100 is right here. Yeah, and then the other thing, the other thing with this mic is that it was holding this slope for so long, like four weeks, and look how accurate it was. Resistance, 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 the, the 50 line acting as support pretty much for the entirety of the three weeks. Um, the upper median line parallel was obviously a little bit messy here on a couple of different breakthroughs, but long story short, if the breakout is legit, you know, we would want to stay constructive essentially above 112, this region here. Same region of which we were looking at as key support last week, same level, same level. Near term resistance, 114. Monthly open, 114.28. Like I said, that's big region to get through to really validate the longer term reversal here in Euro Yen. But I would just be looking for an objective w uh, breach of the w uh, monthly opening range, Mike. I like it to the upside, for sure. I mean, I can't rule out another dip into 112 here before we start to turn over higher, but largely speaking, above 112, uh, I do like Euro Yen higher. Mike, does that help? Does that make sense there on Euro Yen? <clears throat> okay, so that's Euro Pound and Euro Yen. Hey, you're more than welcome, uh, Mike. I appreciate that. I just want to touch base real quick, guys, on uh, gold and crude, and we'll go ahead and wrap things up. If there are any other questions, feel free to post them on the message board. But just a quick touch. Again, a couple of trades that we you know, constantly cover on SB on a daily, daily basis. We talked about crude. Look for that near-term resistance basically where we are now, guys. Maybe a little stretch higher. May open comes in at 45.98, but uh, it's largely looking at a bearish invalidation level key resistance into this level here. And as long as that holds, um, you don't want to get too excited about uh, this rebound here in crude. Um, as far as gold is concerned, another one that's going to continue to make headlines here. Everyone and, you know, <laughs> everyone, let's just leave it there, <laughs> got super excited last week as this thing held into 1355. SB guys, you know the game plan from the very beginning. 1355 was the major resistance level and near-term bearish invalidation level. As long as you're below that, you know, forget all this hassle. Uh, I'm looking for this to be treated as a correction, guys. A lot of questions last week on whether, uh, you know, this is the buy of the century for gold or is this the sell of the century because we're near, you know, uh, the yearly highs. All I can tell you guys is we're being guided by price action. Why did we start turning bearish last month? Very, very simple. There was nothing special. All there was was a basic and very simply readily identifiable line on my chart. This is why I got bearish last month because of this line. It's literally that simple. It's a basic trend line resistance from the all-time record highs that we hit during the crisis or post-crisis here in 2011. We came right into it. We actually did get a weekly close above it, but that was the only week that we closed above it. And we slammed right below. So back to the daily chart. That's that 2011 trend line resistance. The high day close, excuse me, for the year, which is 1355. Last week was our bullish invalidation level. It coincided with former basic trend line support, now resistance. And remember, we didn't know that this slope was in play. But if it was, well, the upper median line parallel converged just above that 1355 level. Just so happens, worked out perfectly. So any rallies you got into 1355 last week, if you sold them, you made decent money. 
the basic trend line support or the basic support barrier that matters right now is 1325 is basically this confluence here of the 50 line for the current operative descending channel and the longer standing multi-year ascending median line formation which con converges right there 1325 okay ultimately in my humble opinion the best buy that you would get on gold would be if we drop down here to 1287 I don't necessarily think we'll get it I think you might finally see a drop into this region and then it rips but largely speaking the risk remains lower near term sub 1355 a breach above that puts us right back on course for the broader uptrend from the yearly low any questions on gold pretty clean from a technical standpoint as far as the key levels that matter they're on gold All right, so uh, if there are other questions on that front, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Again, we'll be back online tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern on SB Trade Desk for another intraday strategy webinar. Uh, I'll give you guys an update tonight, hopefully on some new setups that we're looking at, but broadly it's going to be updates for Euro and Aussie are still my favorite play. Like I said, still holding an Aussie long, so we'll see how that pans out heading to the U.S. Open. As far as the Euro dollar, still liking that as well, not currently holding it. Uh, but we'll be tracking this one into tomorrow's uh, trade session. Remember, uh, heading into tomorrow, you get the CPI numbers from the United States. That's going to be head right ahead of our webinar, guys. Um, so look for those uh, CPI numbers from the UK. And then the US CPI will cover live in the webinar tomorrow morning. Best of luck trading, guys, and I will see you then. Cheers.